I'm not even going to front. My first night in Africa, I was afraid to leave my hotel room. Based on all the negative images that I had seen on TV about Africa since I was a kid. But within the first 48 hours of me actually being on the continent, I had an amazing experience and I felt at home in Soweto. Now, it was the very beginning of my six month journey across Africa and Joburg was my first stop. Now I was with my homeboy Omar and we ended up linking up with this local dude named Tumi. Now Tumi took us to this night spot called Kitchen Airs. And when we went in there, they're playing Neo Soul and 90s hip hop. When I say 90s hip hop, I'm talking about De La Soul, A Tribe Called Quest and everything in between. Now while we were there, Tumi kept on saying, Yo, I'm gonna show you my hood tomorrow. I'm from Soweto, I'm from Soweto, baby. Now, I really didn't know what Soweto was, so I was like, all right, cool, we'll be there. The next morning, we end up catching a minibus taxi from downtown Joburg all the way to Soweto. Now we are at the Joburg MTN bus station. Uh, we're about to go to Soweto, which is one of the townships, and get the real authentic experience. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Now, when we're on this minibus, you know, I'm still, you know, a little nervous about my safety. About 15 minutes into the ride, the bus all of a sudden stops. And I look around and I'm like, uh, bro, man, uh, why we stop here? So then I started to look at what the driver's actually doing. And when I saw what he was doing, I'm just like, I'm tripping. Listen, it does not matter where you are in the world. Black folks over the age of 50 will hold up traffic just to talk to their friend in the next car over. After that random moment, I really felt at home because I used to just see my mom do that all the time when I was a kid. Now when we arrived to Soweto, we were greeted by Tumi and his whole crew and they treated us to some traditional South African dishes at one of the neighborhood restaurants. After we ate, Tumi then took us on a tour throughout Soweto where we got to talk to a lot of the locals to really get a good vibe of what Soweto was really about. Uh, right now I'm standing at Vilagazi Street. It's the only street in the world uh, with two Peace Nobel Prize winners. And it is Dr. Nelson Mandela and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Uh, imagine that power having two Nobel Prize winners from the ghetto. Of Soweto. It was while we were chopping it up with the locals and we were walking down the streets of Soweto and we can see all the murals of all these black leaders that I really finally got a good understanding of what Soweto really was. Soweto is a famous township that was ground zero for the fight against apartheid. During that time you had a lot of black leaders who were living here in the hood amongst the people. The most famous being Nelson Mandela. See, in America, the only person that we ever hear about is Mandela, Mandela, Mandela. But when you're walking through the streets of Soweto, you can see murals of all these other black leaders who we rarely hear about outside of South Africa. The one that a lot of people kept telling me about in Soweto was Chris Haney. They kept telling me, yo, Chris Haney's the man, Chris Haney's the man. He is the Malcolm X of South Africa. So, who is this? This is Chris Haney. He was assassinated. He was an MK. He was militant and uh, a graduate, an intellect as well. Okay. That's how strong he was. Chris Hahn. He assassinated Yeah, he got assassinated. They shot him in the head. But his legacy still lives yeah. on. He was, this guy was bigger than okay. Mandela, man. Really? Yeah. He was. He, he Even was his limelight. Bigger than Mandela. Essentially. Soweto is a hub for culture and creativity. What Harlem meant for black folks in the early to mid 1900s is what Soweto means to South Africa. Soweto has a population of more than 1.5 million people of different socioeconomic backgrounds. There's museums, restaurants, monuments. Uh, you have the houses of black leaders all over the place. There's a lot of art and a lot of really cool and inspiring people in Soweto. Tumi then took us to Low Crate Market, which happens on the first Sunday of each month. Now it's basically a block party. They got a DJ, food trucks, uh, the local businesses can sell their products from food, desserts, clothes, books, you name it. Right now, 
we're in a low crate market. It's a market that happens once a month, every Sunday. It's enjoying the beautiful weather, enjoying the beautiful people. I'm enjoying some sheep's head, <laughs> a mango smoothie that spikes. Everybody here is really friendly. It's real lively. My man, to me right there. Here we go. And I just met him like two days ago. <laughs> Phenomenal guy. Having this experience, the true Joe Bird. Taking us around. Right now we're in Soweto. Yeah. All, all I'm trying to say is we all want, man. I don't care what continent you come from, but you come with good heart, good spirit, good manners, good values. You my own, man, because that's how I was raised like. You know? So I'm one, man. I'm self like that. Man, the vibe in this place was real cool. It was a lot of great people good food, good music, and just positive vibes. It was nothing like what I had been told to fear about coming to Africa. Now when the sun went down, the crowd got thicker and thicker. And video can do no justice as to portray the vibe where this place was like because they were playing a lot of neo soul music. They were playing a lot of American neo soul songs, but remixed and spoken in their local languages. <laughs> So I'm over there just vibing, right? And then all of a sudden, I hear somebody start cranking up a beat, and then these cats start freestyling in their local languages. <laughs> I couldn't really understand what they were saying, but mm, I felt it though, I felt it. After we left there, Toomey then took us to his mom's house where we got to meet the whole family and everyone was treating us like we were their nephews and cousins. Overall, I cannot tell you how much I love Joburg and Soweto. It was the most proper introduction to me to the continent of Africa because I felt at home. Within 48 hours, I went from hearing how dangerous Africa and Joburg is specifically to feeling like this place is just like anywhere else in the world. You have to use just common sense. Within 48 hours, I went from hearing that, you know, Africans don't like African Americans to then being on the continent of Africa and people embracing me and showing me so much love, treat me like I'm their cousin. It was being around all these cool brothers and sisters where I had to hit a hard reset button in my mind about everything that I had thought, heard, and saw on TV about the continent of Africa. From that point on and for the rest of my trips in Africa, I had to go throughout my journey with a blank sheet of paper and welcome and embrace all the new experiences and forget about everything I had been taught about Africa.